So, Bree, can you talk about coming on board and deciding which stories to tell and how you wanted to play out these stories? And then for each of the, the people involved out here, can you talk about gaining every story is about confidence and in establishing identity and talk about, you know, how you came about to getting on screen to telling your stories for all of us to see. Bree? Sure. <laughs> Um, well, this started for me as just, I was driving and I, it hit me just how much shame I was living with. And it turned into many conversations with friends and family and learning that all of us were carrying around a certain amount of shame about something that once it was shared was nothing that was shameful. Um, and what would happen if we shared our stories and realized that we're holding on to burdens that are not real and are not worth it and are, are holding us back from our full potential. Um, that led to this show and to me meeting these incredible young people. Um, so you, you know, y'all take it from there. <laughs> Sage? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the incredible moments um, that we included in my story, and it's a pivotal moment in my life, was when I attended a summit at the White House um, for the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for African Americans, led mm -hmm. by David Johns, who's now the Executive Director of the National Black Justice Coalition, where I serve as the Monica Roberts Fellow. Um, and it was in that moment um, that I had been asked for the first time um, as a trans student, what I need, and I had answered publicly. Um, a lot of my work before then and a lot of telling my story had been done in boardrooms and privately and under pseudonyms. And in that moment, I stood up and I stepped into my truth. And it was that moment being connected with a mentor, another black gay man who centered my voice and uplifted my voice and told me that as a young trans woman of color, a mixed black trans girl that I mattered. Um, and so in that moment, I was equipped with the language, with the community and with the supports necessary to begin telling my story. And so now here I am years later, continuing to do that work as all of us are. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see the impact that this has on our community as queer and trans kids, but, but specifically for black and brown queer and trans kids who are often told that queerness and transness has no space in our communities. Um, and that growing up um, as a queer and trans kid of color isn't a possibility. Um, and, you know, being told that we won't even make it to adulthood. And I'm here um, to disprove that. And I think that the storyline between myself and Amiri, my gay son, um, you know, we met in high school. And I think that that, you know, is such an incredible thing because you know, community matters. And here we are today. We had no idea that the two of us were going to be on this show, but now we get to share this moment. We get to share this space. And I'm really excited to see the impact that our relationship has um, on, on all the kids and in all the families as well watching this. Emily? Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of as, a, um, as I was talking before, I mean, I, I, I think that like, inaccurate meter representation of young disabled people was something that greatly impacted my childhood and impacted the way that I viewed myself and the way that I viewed um, the disabled community as a whole. And so um, and so kind of as I started to grow up and become a teen and with my work with Cripple Media, um, something that I really realized was like how important it is to really send out truthful messages about our community. And so, um, you know, being able to share my story on, on this show was something was incredibly empowering and exciting because that is something that our community needs and I just hope that um it really impacts you know at least one um young disabled kid huh. and Alex <laughs> yeah well I was inspired to share my story because I was really afraid to reach out for help with my depression but once I had asked for help and started receiving treatment for it, I realized that there wasn't actually anything for me to be scared of and that it was a process that I was in control of. And so whenever there was an opportunity for me to speak out and use my platform, I just said yes. And that's led me here. And I'm really happy to share my story in hopes that it'll help other people, young and old, get the help that they deserve. Everybody's story is important. Everybody's story needs to be told. Thank you for Bree for putting this together. Uh, will we get a season two out of this? You know, because I think there's more. I think there's a lot more stories yes. that can be told as well. I really hope so, because I do feel like we were able to cover a lot of ground. But as we've been saying, representation is just such a huge part of this and over and over again came up. And this is just the beginning. There's nuance to every story. There's so many more stories to be told. Um, and I would love to be able to continue this and continue a global conversation about the things that are holding us back from being fully loved. 
Project is worth needed. It's appreciated that you guys are all telling your stories. Congratulations. Hopefully, we'll see what happens down the road. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.